G'day. I'm going to do a belt swap today because uh, this belt is like this and once upon a time this would pass because it's more than 95% still good but these days uh, that will get picked on and I've got Red J coming up so this needs to be replaced. And uh, instead of going out and trying to find a belt from a scrapyard, I'm going to do a belt swap with this, with one from a Toyota that I've got. And uh, I'll show you how I do it. So first of all, we need to take this cover here away. Just fold it back like that. It's not going to come completely away because the belt goes through it. And there's a, I'll just give you a quick look here on a different repair I did a while ago. You can see the clips in there. The original plastic clips broke away, so I just got a, bit, a couple of bits of metal, bent them to shape, rivet, riveted it on, and it just goes straight into those slots like that. And there's the rivets on this side, so that goes back into place normal. Anyway, so we want to take the belt off. So for starters, we'll get this top part out. That's a T50. It's a T50 fitting. And I've got a couple of Phillips head screws to remove here. I'm going to take these rubbers away. Not, not a necessity, just makes it easier. Um, get a Phillips head and we'll remove that. Okay, so just pull this cover away now. It just clips in. And we've got one more. Bolt to go. And take that belt there out. Okay. I'll take this whole thing out. Okay, so here's the Toyota belt I'm going to use. It's got a good belt on it. And there's the Falcon one. Now, to my surprise, they're almost identical. Apart from this clip here being straight and this one being slightly shaped like that, which won't make a difference when I put it in. And uh, these parts here are slightly different, but I could still put this one here in if I wanted to. Check out these belts, they're exactly the same. I'll put them next to each other. The mechanisms are exactly the same as each other. If I wanted to, I could just grind that off. I'd have to use a nut and bolt though, because that has a thread on it, and this one doesn't. So I'd have to um, put a nut on this side, probably tack weld it. And I could use this belt if I couldn't find the same one for the Falcon. So I might even um, just have a bit of a play right now with this in the Falcon, this mechanism here, and see if it fits. Well, I find that very interesting. I've only got the bolts partly screwed in from the Trago seat belt into the Falcon. And like I said, this one here, all I'd have to do is grind that away, weld a nut on this side. And um, bolt that in, and that'll work fine. This clip clips into the uh, belt mechanism latch as well. That's amazing that I could actually just replace this whole belt with the one from a Trigo. But anyway, I want to do it properly. I want to take the belt out and uh, swap it over. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I just want to show you here what it looks like once it's extracted. Uh, this belt, because it had wound, wound in so far in, I couldn't get the belt to self-extract. So just unclipping the sides here. And uh, then you can see the mechanism inside. Now when this ball bearing sits at the right angle, it allows slack on there. That's, and that releases the, the gearing here. So just unclipping that, pulling that back by hand. And then I took the belt out. Once I got to a certain point, I let go and just held the 
belt upright in this normal position that it would be in the car and then just kept feeding it out until I got to this point. Once I got to here, uh, this is not a genuine Toyota seat belt. It's actually an aftermarket one. Even though the mounting all looks correct, I don't know. Just This came out of a 94 Turago. I just know that my Toyota and my 92 Toyota, it's much different. Anyhow, so... I pointed that out because of this reason. I'll just use a screwdriver as a pointer. Normally there's holes through these vents here. With my 92 there is. So I could put a screwdriver for that easy. Once you've done this a few times, like I have, you no longer need a screwdriver. But if you're a first timer, it's a good idea to put a screwdriver through there to hold this in position. Because if this lets go, it'll spin so quick, you not even you won't even have two sec two seconds to react and this whole bell will be retracted this spring here will probably spring out and bust all bust all up if not it will probably go too far the other way and break I've had it happen to me before when I first started doing belts and um, well, I can't say when I first started doing belts in the first belts I did I should say because it's not something I do every day <clears throat> so just for this practice I've drilled a hole through uh, with me drill and um, just put the screwdriver there to stop that from slipping out and so this is what it looks like there once it's in and you push that out and that's just again this here with Toyota it's normally a rod that goes through that holds that in place so that tells me that this was an afterthought with the later model Turago, so don't go buying a Turago seat but thinking, oh yeah, it'll fit my Falcon because it may not. And that goes for any car really. Um, not all belts are the same. So this has just been heated into position here. It's not stitched or anything, it's just heated and put into position. So I'll probably do the same thing with an iron, flip it over and iron that off anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut that so I can get this belt out. That's rubbish. And now I can pull this belt out. And that's the mechanism there. I've got myself a belt that I can use. And I'm going to put the belt from the other car, from the Falcon, into this one. Just so I can let it retract and still keep a functioning working, working mechanism for, for when I do a repair later on. Okay, so this is the one from the Falcon. And uh, this is already wound to its maximum, but I can't get it to go back any further. So I've got a drill bit stuck in there just to stop that from swinging back. Now, I was about to take it out when I found something interesting. Unlike the other belt, how it's been melted, when I was taking this out, I found that this belt here, coming out, that this belt here is nothing more than just folded over. That's it. So I will get the iron, I'll, I'll fold it over and I'll get the iron and I'll, you know, melt it into, into place rather with the, with an iron, just make get that edge on it and um, to put it in, but I find that very interesting. So I don't have to cut this one, I can just pull that out. There's number on this one as well. Let's pair that up. What numbers we got here? Well, not even close to each other, but they both do start with a W, and they both bottom numbers end with, end with an A. I don't know if that means anything really. Okay, so it's important to also put the belt in how it would be if it was retracted in the car. So you got that's how it would be. It was all together, and that's how it comes out. So before you put the end of the belt in the re retractor and let it retract, 
you want to make sure that you've got everything correct here first. You don't want to have this accidentally the wrong way and you put the belt all together because then you're going to have to pull the belt all apart again just to swip, swap one part over. Okay, so that's like that there. I don't need to swap this over, but I'm going to because it's black and it looks better. So I'm going to give all these parts a clean first before I put it back in, before I put it all back together. Okay, so now I've got all the clips and everything swapped over. These are the ones from the other belt that I'm not using. This is pretty self-explanatory. That curves in a direction that it needs to go back in. But if it didn't, then you'd need to follow this here, make sure that winds back in the correct way. And this is going to be the trickiest belt I've done. I've done a few, but they don't normally have all this rubbish in the way. So you can see this belt's um give me a bit of grief lining everything back up to get that belt through but it's just a matter of patience and get there okay to make life a little bit easier for myself i put tape over the end so i found feeding belt through a lot easier that way and that curves around that way so i know i've got that correct and i also know that i could just fold this over right now because that's how it was. You know, that's what I've been telling you about. I was lucky the belt was in that because I can pull that back out now. But that's what I mean. It gets away from you. I'm glad that happened so I could show you. Be careful of that, because I now know that this belt is not completely locked in properly when I get to the end there. So I've got to be really careful now to pull it to retract this. <clears throat> but since I'm there, let's make sure that the rest of it's okay. So when that goes down inside the door, the belt's going to go this way. And that's going to go in that way, and it's going to bolt inside the car there, so that's fine, exactly how I want it. But now the fun part. Not so fun. Because it could easily get away from me again, and be stuffed. Aren't I lucky? I had enough hanging through there to save me. Yeah, that's right. I was a bit confused at first that it curved this way when I was putting it in here, but that's because it winds from this side around. I was just overthinking it for a second there. Hey, I'm only human, we all make mistakes, eh? Alright, I need to get this around. It's a bit hard to show you at the same time as doing this, eh? So I'm going to get that around, I'm going to fix this up, and then we'll come back.
That's steam, you can see, not smoke. Okay, I can see that's a bit smoothed off there now, so that's taking shape, but it's freaking hot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of shoe glue in there. I'm hoping to have some. And then when I'll suck that back in, it's going to hold nice and firm. Like you saw in the first place, the Falcon one wasn't stitched or nothing anyway. So it's all good. Yes. That's what I'm going to use there, shoe fix. Just make sure I'll use my hand to make sure that goes in properly. in there, remove my drill bit there that I was holding that in place, and that's it, and there we go, it's in, all good, like I bought one, and even the back part there, the part down here that had the flex on it, it um, doesn't even bother it. It all works well. All done. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time. Cheers.